my utmost for his highest. <laughs> and boy, is it always his utmost. I can tell you that. Before utmost, I had to go get another cup of coffee. You're like, oh my gosh, it's a two coffee day. <laughs> uh, I like that. I don't do designer coffees or anything, you know, and I don't do the Starbucks. I mean, I, I know what it is. I've been there. I've seen it. I've experienced it for myself. But, you know, I, I enjoy figuring out sometimes a cheaper way to go or a less expensive. And praise the Lord for those that do. And, you know, I've been there. I'm a Southern California brat. You know, I've been from throwing money away after nothing and sharing in fellowship at the same time as you know scrambling for every cent that I had or penny and even being homeless and sharing in that and you know I didn't see much difference between the two because both peoples wherever they are if they were desperately in need needed Jesus so whether you're blessed or poor whether you're rich or whether you're impoverished, whether you have a job, or whether you're needy. The only thing that is ever universal about all of us in humanity is that we all were created by God. We all have a need inside to be loved. We all put everything else that we can on us and in us to fit that place of love that we want, but there's only one thing that ever is going to satisfy for eternity that need, that desire, that place that we sometimes make marriages and destroy marriages over because they don't meet our requirements for what God said we need, then that one thing is Jesus. And once you are in Him and you've made Him your love, then you can love properly your wife, your child, your house, your home, your cars, your possessions, your riches, your poverty, your life itself. But if you don't love God first, it'll all fall apart. Not today, necessarily. Maybe not tomorrow, but sooner or later. God will have no other gods before him, and he'll have nothing in his way when he wants to deal with you. For me... And he's proven it in my life. Service of passionate devotion. Lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. John 21, 16. Give him a cup of coffee. Jesus did not say, make converts to your way of thinking, but look after my sheep. See that they get nourished in the knowledge of me. We count as service what we do in the way of Christian work. Jesus Christ calls service what we are to him, not what we do for him. Discipleship is based on devotion to Jesus, not on adherence to a belief or to a creed or to a church or to a person. If any man come to me and hate not, and you know the rest, he cannot be my disciple. And you can fill in the blank. There is no argument and no compulsion, but simply, if you would be my disciple, you must be devoted to me. A man touched by the Spirit of God suddenly says, now I see who Jesus is, and there and that is the source of devotion. Today we have substituted a credo belief, a faith that we think we believe, for a personal belief, and that is why so many are devoted to causes, political, social, righteous, holy, churchiology, you name it. Some people want to save cats. Some people want to save dogs. Some people want to save the whales. Some people want to save politicians. Some people want to save the sports figure. Some people want to save their own sports agenda, their own career. You name it. That's what they believe in. People do not want to be devoted to Jesus, but only to the cause he started. They say, 
Jesus gave this to me, so I give credit to Jesus. But are they devoted to him? I owe it all to Jesus, but are they devoted to him? I thank God for this, but are they devoted to him? Jesus Christ is a source of deep offense to the educated mind of today that does not want him in any other way than as a comrade, a partner. Our Lord's first obedience was to the will of his Father, not to the needs of men. The saving of men was the natural outcome of his obedience to the Father. If I am devoted to the cause of humanity only, I will soon be exhausted and come to the place where my love will falter. And if I love Jesus Christ personally and passionately, I can serve humanity, though men treat me as a doormat. The secret of a disciple's life is devotion to the person of Jesus Christ. And the characteristic of the life, life with him is its unobtrusiveness. It is like a corn of wheat which falls into the ground and dies, but presently it will spring up and alter the whole landscape. John 12, 24. You know, it's easy to be religious. That's the easy part. It's easy to put on Christian airs. That's not hard either. As a matter of fact, it's pretty easy to get saved because all you got to do is just follow the instructions that some altar call gives. It's easy to tell yourself that you are saved. It's easy to tell yourself that you're holy. It's easy to tell yourself you're righteous. But can you t tell yourself what Jesus said today? Can you tell yourself or your loved one or the person next to you what God has spoken to you today? Can you say, God said? I do. God told me today that, hey, you know what? I need to have no other obtrusiveness in anything in my life than Jesus himself. And I need to spend that quality time and personal time with him for me because I don't want to let other things invade that time and that precious person that I know that is sitting right next to me that I can look at and just say, hey, Lord, you know, what do you got in store for me today? You know, I'd rather do what you want to do than do what I want to do because every time I do what I want to do, I get burned out and I get pissed off and I get upset and I get frustrated and I get anxious and I get off on a tangent and then I wonder what happened. And you're still sitting here at the table and I'm going, oh, I was supposed to be still. Okay, and you would have told me what to do. So what about you? Can you say with full assurance that you know what God's will is for you today? Or is it by faith that you know that? Did God tell you what to do today? You know, I, I meet all kinds of people that always quote these scriptures in reference to hiding behind what they think is God's will for them. They say, oh, well, you know, God calls them for pastors and for deacons and for elders for, you know, instruction and righteousness and blah, blah, blah. And so then they say, that's mine, I appropriated it. Oh, okay, I'm glad you appropriated it, but now, did God say it? <laughs> You know, they never tell me straight up, straight to the word, straight from their own personal experience with God. Yes, as a matter of fact, I did hear God speak to me about it. God caused me to read it. God said, I want you to apply this to your life. God showed me how it does. God told me this is me. This is who I am. This is what I do. You see how all that still fits? It's by using the same idea of appropriation but it's by conversation with Jesus that he makes it appropriate for you. It's so easy to get misled by all these little catchphrases that Christianity has, when in reality it all boils down to you have to have that relationship. You have to hear him. You have to be able to know that God is speaking to you without someone else telling you that God is speaking to you. It's between you and him. You are going to stand alone on that day all alone by yourself there'll be no pastor there there'll be no deacon there there'll be no church there there'll be no one else there there'll be no excuses there'll be no reasons there'll just be jesus and he's the only way that you're going to be able to either go from that moment when you see him face to face to hug him and kiss him and to love him or from him to say depart from me i never knew you and he casts you away into the lake of fire. How devastating it would be to think that you've done all these marvelous things and wondrous abilities and for Jesus to say on that day, he didn't know you. I don't say these things with great 
confidence in myself. I always say, God, don't let that be me. Lord, don't let that be applied to me. God, don't, don't let ever the day come that you would depart from me, that you never knew that I never knew that you had left and that I am not with you, but always be taking whatever it takes, whether it be life or death or breaking me or taking me or shaking me or busting me or beating me or whatever it takes, God, let me be always with you. And so as much as I love the idea that everyone is given these assurances, know that the fear of the Lord is a recognition that you need to maintain a personal relationship with God. And that is through Jesus. You need that. Make sure you keep that as the focus of your life. Because without focus, everyone else will point you at what they want you to see. But you look, you see, you be where God wants you to know Him. And when you do, hey, it's gravy, really. Sort of. <laughs> God bless you.